Hey everyone, thank you for joining today. Uh, super excited to have you all and uh, have this conversation over the next 30 minutes. Um, I was gonna do a quick introduction for myself and then maybe uh, if the four of you wanna uh, do a short introduction and then we can get started. So uh, my name is Parth. Um, uh, I have been in product management career for close to a decade. Um, uh, most of my career I've been uh, product manager for e-commerce space, etc. But uh, more recently, uh, I spent about a year and a half doing product management for Alexa and their smart home experience. And then more recently, uh, I've been working on AWS for uh, a few of their AI and computer vision products. Um, I'm based out of Austin, Texas, uh, and it's pretty sunny out right here. So uh, that, that kind of summarizes me. Um, why don't you spend like a few minutes to introduce yourself and then we can get started. Uh, um, sure. yeah. I can start. Uh, my name is Victoria. Um, I'm from Brazil and I'm working for a company that's also based in Brazil. But since we get to work remotely, I have moved to France. So now I live in Bordeaux in France. And I started doing product manager for um, one and a half years. And I feel like it's going to be a really good opportunity to learn how to actually structure process better and understand um, how to actually grow more into this position. Yeah, sounds good. Leela? Hello, I'm Leela. I uh, most recently have been a group product manager at uh, an ed tech startup called Career Karma. And um, I've been in, you know, digital products and growth for over 16 years now. I've been, um, you know, working across a lot of different environments um, and in different capacities. I didn't um, start off in product management. You know, I've been in um, digital marketing, SEO, uh, consulting as an analyst, as an engagement manager. Um, you know, so I've operated across marketing, product, um, consulting during that time um, and B2B, B2C. And, you know, as I um, am joining today, I'm really looking to learn from you, Parth, about, about your own career journey. I mean, everybody's journey is different. There's no right way. Uh, but I'm very interested in learning about your experiences and how you've evolved over time, like the lessons you've, you've learned over time. Sounds good. Yep. Um, and I'll Yes, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Manohar Kamath. Uh, I'm based in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, my background basically is in engineering. Uh, I have, have had about uh, uh, at least a quarter century uh, in engineering. Uh, I have uh, co-founded uh, two companies. Uh, so uh, I have developed uh, mobile products. Uh, the reason I'm here is basically I want to understand from Parth uh, uh, about product management. Uh, I have done product management about 10 years ago. Uh, the reason I'm here is I want to understand uh, how I can come back into the industry, uh, uh, you know, and uh, look into pro uh, go into product management and what are the some of the things that uh, new things I need to learn. <laughs> so. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. Sounds good. Hopefully, I'll also learn a little bit from your founder journey. That sounds okay. interesting. Okay, great. Priyanshu? Hi, this is Priyanshu. I'm based out of Australia. Currently, it's quite night over here, 1 a.m. Oh, wow. uh, I have worked into the product management space, into the payment domain size for around two years. Uh, but later on, I have moved to, into the business analysis uh, side. Now I would like to go back into the product management side and that's why I'm over here to basically learn and how can I jump over to the product management back as well as I would like to know more from the product strategy that I believe I'm a little bit weak on that side. So I want to make that point stronger or as a part of my skill. Okay. Thank you. That's really good. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get started then. Um, uh, just FYI, we're going to make this, con like this chat very conversational back and forth. Feel free to interrupt. Like the idea is to, uh, uh, make it very informal. Uh, so, uh, with that said, um, 
we can we can get started uh and we can probably go top to bottom but as i said like when questions are asked or i'm sharing my experiences etc feel free to chime in and ask your questions or if you have any experiences to share with the group that's also fine right so uh yeah we'll try and make it as informal as possible um so with that said i'm just going to go top to bottom as to what i'm seeing on the panel so manohar uh, uh if you want to go first you can get you can kick us off with what you may want to talk about yeah so i want to understand uh, from product management i'm trying to basically get back into the corporate world so uh, the challenges that i have is uh, getting traction so okay. uh, i don't know i have uh, created a resume uh, okay. sometimes i <laughs> don't get traction so i'm trying to understand what uh, you know what i'm doing wrong uh, either uh, or do they see me too much or qualified or whatever mm-hmm. it is uh, that i'm uh, applying for and also at the same time i want to understand uh, means what are some of the uh, new technologies or the new tools that product managers use these days uh, in order to manage products uh, as i said i co-founded two companies both were mobile products i have done basically uh, everything from scratch so i'm mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, here to understand Uh, i might not have gone uh, through a formal channel of uh, being a product manager so what do i understand from you yeah things that i need to do yeah so uh, let's unpack on both of those questions like first part was more about like breaking into product management with your specific set of experiences etc mm-hmm. um um uh, uh, of course like how lila was saying everyone has their own product management journey breaking into product management and growing in the role and all um uh, but there are two ways i look at it uh, one is like if you come with very specific uh, uh, sort of experiences around certain domain you can absolutely leverage on it for example let's say let's say you have a ton of experience in 5g or telecommunications etc uh it would make absolute sense for you to go after those kind of roles and those kind of companies to that that can see more value in your prior experiences either as a, a founder or engineer etc right so um uh, that's one way to look at it you go towards like specialized product management um a second one where uh, where uh, you may or may not be getting traction is possibly when you go after generalized product management like hey with the experience that you have had you most likely feel like you can do product management for almost any kind of product a b2b product b2c product ai product etc uh, but i think when it does come to breaking into product management with the kind of experience that you have uh, it's possible you would be better off capitalizing on the domain and specific skill set that you have gained uh, over recent past and as far as your resume is concerned um you can try and see if product school has um any any mechanisms or session for like resume reviewing etc and then we can leverage some of those conversations as well um so that's the first part of your question the second was uh remind me uh, what was the second question that you had means uh what do people basically do uh, the these tools. Days, uh, tools and things like that uh, yeah any specific things that people use to mm-hmm. manage products yeah uh, on this question i think I, I, i'll let like both victor and leela to also chime in like because uh, my experience has been throughout different teams or orgs or companies have worked that are in product role um uh, like each team or org ha- have their own way of operating things doing things you sometimes have to like come up with your own processes and tools uh but what matters the most uh, in product role is you ensuring your engineers have what they need right uh, if, like if they come and say like hey i'm more comfortable looking at a word doc with a set of requirements and so be it you help them um with that if they say i want to use jira or asana or kanban or agile like of course you do want to look at your priorities and make sure you are picking the right techniques and tools but what matters the most is uh, you serving your engineers in being unblocked and really deliver value 
for your customers and innovate on behalf of customers now that's just about like core product role uh, in helping your engineers achieve what they need to you may also then end up having to think about okay what what about my uh, ux counterpart or uh, designers and like again um, in product role you do want to be able to uh, uh sort of adjust into whatever tool set rest of the team or org is comfortable leveraging while of course being critical and influential towards what does make sense what doesn't in long term uh so that's kind of long winded answer to say like of course there are tools right now in market that most of product managers use uh but what really matters the most is you ensuring all the counterparts and stakeholders that you are working with they are bought into whatever tools and processes that you use um and again as i said victorial leela like you also come with some product management experience like you can also share like what tools etc you use and um how much flexibility you end up incorporating in deciding your tools and processes for us um since we're still struggling to find the proper monetization process uh, we don't have a lot of budget to use with tools so we've been trying to make the best we can with the free tools that we find um available right now and it was a bit hard to actually encounter the perfect uh, tool and process but finally uh, we've reached a point that we are very comfortable with what we, what we are using usually we use the google docs to share documents between the whole company so we are writing specs on google docs and all of the documents that need to be shared also the excel sheets um the spreadsheets from google docs and for design and engineering we're using trello so that's where we are organizing our our structure and for myself i like to use notion to organize mm-hmm. my own my own work there my own like product specifically product things but when we are talking to developers or or design it's in trello yes awesome so yeah like like you 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 can probably try and find out like what works best for you what works best for your team and organ it's completely fine not being set to any uh external standards um thank you cool all right uh we can go to victoria uh down the panel uh yes so um we built a startup from scratch and in the beginning it was a very chaotic uh environment because we were trying to find product market fit trying to find exactly what we should build and trying out all of these new ideas and so yeah it was very chaotic we were always doing different things and now we've reached a point that we are very comfortable with the products that we have right now so we are focusing on enhancing the the core product and also finish building the ones we have already started so we are switching now from these um very like doing a lot of different things at the same time and trying a lot of different things to actually having more process and routine and sometimes i struggle a little bit into understanding that this is the moment now and finding some routine and structure inside the the whole product um routine especially because now we have other product managers as well handling specific products whereas i'm handling the whole product as a whole so i would like to know um in bigger start in bigger companies in companies that are more structured um how exactly is uh, your week for example what are the rituals and the routines that you also you always follow and how do you structure exactly your your work yeah um and correct me if i'm wrong victoria i'm seeing two questions one is operating in product role while you have multiple different product people uh managing different smaller components of a product while you are trying to operate at scale and the second question is like what does a day to day operation look like for a product person in a larger uh, org right those are the two questions okay uh we'll tackle the second one first because i can just talk about my day that's easier to talk about um um so uh it, it, short answer is it depends but long answer is um uh given amazon is fairly document driven place um uh, a lot of my personal time goes into like writing different kind of docs and ensuring i have mechanisms on my calendar um uh, to like meet whatever needs i have and the org has and the product has um um and 
generally what it looks like is okay if if you need to arrive upon a decision that looks like kind of one kind of talk if there's a product idea then you may have heard of six pages or pr faq if there is a conflict resolution or prioritization conversation like those kind of documents look very different than the others that i talked about um so uh, usually during a week i i sort of know what kind of decisions or uh, uh, conversations are pending and what to go after so um you would see like part of my calendar is blocked for some kind of writing and some kind of doc that i am pursuing and at a time i would have a few docs uh, in progress and uh, uh, uh just to double click on that like you may hear a lot about the six pager or pr faqs but these are long processes a good pr faq does take sometimes months as it goes through several revisions and approvals and investment cycles etc so uh, like that's what most of my day goes into but other than that um, it really re- revolves around in a specific week what do uh, my stakeholders need what does the product need what does what do the engineers need or ux person needs um and really structuring a week around what needs to happen and that is very um micro way of looking at things uh, i also then have like quarterly goals uh, or yearly goals to say here is what i do want to do right um and really finding time for it and accountability for it um uh, throughout my day um and feel free to interrupt me if it didn't answer your question but uh, like i think given a lot of what it depends uh, yeah i just shared like what areas i end up focusing on um but your second question about uh, managing product at scale and then like in sort of a group product manager role um i think what has helped me um in past and more recently as well is what i call radical delegation right um be radical about radical about delegating and trusting your product counterparts who may be handling specific parts of the product that you are accountable for or kps that you are accountable for um at the same time you do want to place mechanisms so that they also feel supported and get what they need out of you right so if if it means spending 30 minutes or an hour every week with each of them trying to figure out and an unblocking uh, either unblocking them or being a sounding board i think that plays even like better role as to some they just need a different product person to talk to validate their thought process to say okay does this make sense is this something should i go after like next week or next quarter etc um so yeah that those are the two things that has helped me one be very radical in uh, delegating Uh, and at the same time put mechanisms in place so that they do get the support that they need uh, uh, throughout their product journey great thank you okay uh leela we can we can uh, we can go to you yes uh oh, by the way i saw someone in the chat mention that they they wanted to know how you uh, formulated goals for a product you follow okay our process and then i can ask my question uh thank you yeah um I think uh, how about this we we can, let's let's go through all four of you and then we'll go through all the comments top to bottom uh, but thank you for drawing my attention there that is helpful yeah for sure uh, my question has more to do with your career journey um i see that you know uh, like me very early in your career you started off in digital marketing and you know now you're in more of a technical product role you know for myself i'm you know my current um background is is less technical so I'm, uh in addition to learning about your journey i'm wondering about you know in your day to day how how much do you lean into your technical knowledge and like how have you developed your technical knowledge throughout your career journey so there's really two parts of the questions you know this yeah. the overall journey and then uh how you've developed technical skills throughout that journey and and how much of that you and need and want to lean into that um day to day absolutely yeah um so um I, as, as far as my uh career and the influence of technology on it is concerned like i i did my undergrad in information technology so like i did go through like traditional 
um, uh, software engineering courses, etc. So that kind of helped build foundation. And then my master's was in information systems. So that's where I ended up getting introduced to a lot more system design uh, constructs and concepts, etc. So of course, academic part did help. Um, um, but in my day-to-day -day role, like whenever I do go into a new product area, a new team, a new org, like uh, like one, I have to accept I know almost nothing about it. But then uh, I need what I do is find right sort of people either directly in my organization or outside of my organization or even external resources uh, to really understand. Uh, the behind the scenes of how it works. And it is not an easy process. When I started working on um, uh, Alexa or Smart Home, like I had no prior experience of conversational AI. But you do take like good two to three months to understand uh, the behind the scenes of it and be very okay spending several hours either with your uh, principal engineers or senior engineers to sit down and say, like, how does it work? Help me understand. Um, I personally have been very comfortable popping open Postman and making API calls to understand here is how systems are interacting with each other. So that has helped. Um, and more recently, as far as like Amazon is concerned, like there are two distinct roles. Like one is product manager, very traditional product management. And then there is PMT, like product management technical. You end up working with a lot more technical uh, products, so the expectations are also that that not only you do the core product roles, but also are capable of influencing uh, uh, technology decisions and system design, etc. Um, uh, so the, the uh, interworkings of how Amazon operates has also helped me recently to kind of um, uh, maintain a higher bar for uh, my uh, technical needs and performance. Um, I think, again, that was one of the two questions. Your second question was what, again? Uh, just about your career journey, like, uh, you know, how you uh, got into product management, um, you know, why why you chose it, how you yeah. grew over your career. Yeah. Um, so, um, I, I found product management by accident. Um, <laughs> Uh, I did do a bunch of, um, I, I started my career in data science role, right? I, I was essentially doing uh, number crunching data analytics for um, a startup based out of Dallas. Um, and um, without realizing, I recognized that I was doing product management of some sort, one way or the other, whether it is figuring out what should the data visualization look like for a report like this. Uh, if I were to standardize uh, this kind of report that does go out to all of our clients every month, uh, what would that process or product look like? And then I ended up inventing, okay, uh, if I run these sort of macros, I'm going to produce this kind of data visualization dashboard. And I'm, I'm going to work with some engineers to write a script to say, publish these reports out to these recipients. Now, without realizing essentially, I was building some sort of product. Um, but then when I got done with my master's, I graduated, I was looking at all possible things that people with information systems degree go into uh, identify product management. And I ended up finding a few mentors who helped me find my foot in the door uh, and helped me recognize like what is product management and how to be better at it. Uh, so yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's very much by accident, but uh, mostly all of us would have done some sort of product management without realizing. So that's how I ended up finding it as well. Thank you. And just one last follow-up question to that is, um, you know, now that you've been um, a product manager over the years and, and now are at Amazon, it, what has evolved about your practice, about your how you approach product management today versus, you know, a couple of years ago? Um, that's an interesting question. I don't know. Um, I think one thing that I have learned is um, when to be in control of your product and when to let go of uh, the control on your product. And it's very, very important. You do want your UX designer to feel very comfortable coming up with what what the product needs to look like. 
your engineer should not feel constrained at the same time like knowing when to take back control and like steer the ship a ship as to what makes sense and how to go to market etc uh so like uh, i wouldn't say i was the best at that part in my first like 24 months in product career 10 years ago but like i now feel more comfortable and in tune with like what the uh, what those needs are thank you all right uh let's quickly go through priyanshu and then uh, we'll see if we have some time left for comments as well like sure okay so i have 14 year of experience out of it 2 years in the product management and 12 years in business analysis side um currently working as a business analyst but the product management that tenure i have worked since 2017 uh, 2017 to 2019 now i would like to come back to the product management as per your side but whenever i apply for a job usually people basically ask like why you want to go back to the product management side if you uh, have a strong experience in the business analysis side which is lacking behind applying through the uh, to the product management side second thing even if one or two interviews are lined up into the product management side one of the question i uh, basically say challenge is like how do you uh, make the product strategy because uh, i would say when i was a product manager uh, my seniors used to basically create the product strategy i was just helping them them out So if you can basically shed some light on that. Yeah. Um, on the first one, uh, like people asking you, hey, you have been business analyst and why product management, et cetera. I, I would say like in a product role, at some point or the other in your product life cycle, you will end up wearing multiple different hats. Like you will end up playing part business analyst when you are working with your business analyst counterpart or if you don't have a business analyst counterpart as a startup or a small org then you are doing it yourself or whether it is uh, like testing or qa or like if it's system design or um uh, like if it is like gtm pricing strategy etc you do end up doing a little bit of all of those things unless you are very much privileged with like actual people in those roles supporting you so like answering that first question if anyone asks you that is like fairly straightforward like hey yes i do have business analyst experience i just want to take all of my experience and apply it to my product role so like that kind of gets it out of the way and i think that that is true for anyone like you know, let's say you have been a chef all your life and then you like involve yourself into product and tech etc and you think how oh, you can uh serve a company or org uh with your experience that's completely fine that like that sort of diversified talent actually does help organizations and companies so uh, capitalize on it like i was telling manohar as well uh so that's one um a uh, second one is um you know, strategy uh, i think like short answer is each company does strategy differently like what i've seen um uh i'm just quickly going to answer naomi yes uh, naomi uh, if we can extend extend five more minutes i can stay back so that i can also take a look at the linkedin comments and answer any questions um so like more than knowing what like how do you draft strategy or what do you strategy like what do you do as part of product strategy um what you do want to know is what is not product strategy like figuring out a road map for next year is not product strategy uh coming out with like set of use cases and product session is not product strategy uh and i think maybe given our time constraint we can have like dedicated conversation on product strategy etc but what i can do is i'll probably speak with uh, naomi to share whatever resources that i have used to have better understanding of product strategy and then putting it in practice that will possibly help you sure sure thank you Okay. All right. Uh given we are extending for five more minutes, I'm going to quickly go through uh LinkedIn comments and see uh what all we can answer in next five minutes. So I'm going to go from top to bottom as I'm seeing on studio. Um How is product management different from project management? Yeah, um uh again like each each company org operates differently they have their own definition of product management and project management 
sometimes they are the line between them are blurred i do not enjoy it i actually run away from those places but uh to answer your question like uh project management is fairly critical uh traditionally in recent times in large organizations you 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 see more of technical program managers versus project managers so maybe i can talk about like tpms and then help them differentiate from product management um so technical program managers uh, help you deliver a product in collaboration with dev managers and engineers they also sometimes get involved in breaking down uh, large size engineering problems into smaller consumable deliverable chunks right and they of course work in collaboration with product managers for prioritization etc um product management in its true sense like does does like the core job of product management is to help make sure engineers get to deliver what the product and customers need and you do whatever is needed to make that happen if that includes writing sets of requirements building road map writing strategy docs um and managing dependencies and stakeholders and like traditional product managers will end up doing a lot of that uh, but when it comes to actual delivery of uh, an engineering solution or product that is when uh, technical program managers come in place project management is like um uh, a version of it where uh, historically i have seen project managers not getting too involved in technical aspects of the solution but that is not to say that's how all project managers operate um as i said it kind of depends on the company and org and how they have formed those roles um the next question i see is um uh how do you formulate your goals for a product or do you follow okr process um more recently uh, i'm currently working on more of a zero to one product so more recently uh um, um i'm having to depend upon um the like different mechanisms to come up with like all sorts of kpis that i can measure on any specific day right i i do come up with like hey here are the 20 things i care the most about and then you spend a lot more time looking at that uh kpi doc as to here are, here is everything that you can measure or should measure but then be be Uh, ruthless in prioritizing those KPIs and say, "Hey, here are the five most important ones." More importantly, once you do that, once you have that conviction, you do want to take that KPI doc or deck or however you operate to the rest of your orgs, your peer product managers or your stakeholders, um, even your engineer, especially your engineers, to say, "Hey, here are the KPIs that I think I'm defining um, to measure success of our product. Uh, does it make sense or not?" Right. So. uh uh building that cohesion is equally important as you coming up with the right set of kpis um and for goals again um i think it does depend a lot more on the product like um uh like for conversational ai the goals look very different than something for computer vision um i do have some resources on like the processes and frameworks to come up with not only the kpis but also success criteria for those kpis and i can probably share that with uh, product school and see how we can get it across uh, this audience um and sorry i'm having to rush through it i'm i'm mindful of time so uh, uh, hopefully we can do more of it in future um to answer any additional questions i'll do one more question given we have a minute left let's see uh product management more into build product with project yeah someone answered that question uh how what helped you make it into amazon what is the strategy um uh, um personally i was looking for um personally i was looking for like interesting problem statements like up uh, like before entering amazon i had already spent like close to 7 or 8 years in product manager role mostly in e-commerce space um after that i started looking for like problem statements that do excite me personally that i do find very interesting and almost knew nothing about and that's how i ended up with uh uh alexa and smart home etc uh and now now i'm into aws trying to figure out computer vision and ai and all of that so more recently in last couple of years and i don't know if pandemic has anything to do with it but what has interested me in figuring out my strategy and what to 
go after is what problem statements truly, truly excite me. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that kind of answers uh, hopefully the question. Um, we are at time, um, but I do see a bunch of questions. I'm going to jump on LinkedIn and see if I can answer any of those questions and comments. But this has been super fruitful. I enjoyed this conversation. All of the questions that uh, all the folks in the studio, like Manohar, Victoria, Leela, and Priyanshu asked, as well as a bunch of really good questions and comments over LinkedIn. Uh, so I just want to say thank you all for your time. Uh, hope you have a fantastic rest of Friday and a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.